Hey guys, it's May May and it is time to do a card tutorial. And when I showed you guys the cards from our card party, I asked you if there were any tutorials you would like to see. And lots of you said every one of them. <laughs> and so, maybe, maybe. I don't know, that would be a lot because we made like 20 cards. But I thought tonight I would knock two of them out of the way. And they were the manly cards that I did because obviously you guys are just like me. And you always need a card for the men in your life. So that's what we're going to start with. The, the first one we're going to make together is this one. Very simple. So let's get started. Okay, so what you're going to need for this one is a piece of paper that starts out as an 8.5 by 11. Now, I'm going to use this blue piece of paper to show you because it, it is 8.5 by 11 and the brown that I'm going to actually use for the card is not going to show up really well. You're going to take your 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. You're going to cut it to 5.5 inches the long way. Not the normal way. Not the way we usually cut it in half like this or when we cut it in half like this. You're actually going to cut the whole strip at 5.5 inches, okay? That is what I have done here. Now we're going to do some scoring. Now we're going to create the flaps that fold over to create the jacket or sweater or whatever way you want it to look like. And we're going to have to score these. Now, this is the center piece that's going to slide inside. This piece is cut at four and a quarter by five and a half, which is the actual size of an A2 size card. Okay, so this is the piece we're actually going to use in the center. But what I did was I cut myself another one. And see how I folded this one in half? Here's what I did. This is an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So we know the center mark of this is five and a half, okay? So what I did was I placed that center mark of this piece that matches my insert, four and a quarter by five and a half, okay? Right here, and I could see that I need to score this. This is the cheater method, okay, without doing math. I need to score this right here. Okay, so I'm going to score this at three and three eighths, and I can move this now because I know three and three eighths. And now I'm going to flip this guy around, go back to my five and a half mark, just like so. Okay, that's my five and a half. I thought that's not right. Okay, there's my five and a half mark. I'm going to score it. I'm going to check it, and yes, it's three and three eighths again. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to come up here to the top and you're going to decide if this is the top of your card or if this is the top of your card. I'm going to let this be the top of my card. And I want my lapels to come down to the 3 inch mark. Okay, so I'm going to put a 3 inch, just a little, just a little divot right there at 3 inches. And now this is important. Okay, when you go to measure your second side, bring the bottom part to here. Okay, don't do all this crazy twisting around and flipping over. You're going to take this piece of paper and you're going to flip it up into your scoreboard and mark it at the three inch mark. That way your marks will be the same. If you were to turn this, because we're not marking in the center, you would get an offset mark. So you want to make sure you make this mark, bring the bottom to the board and do it again. Okay, simple enough. Now we get out our trusty trimmer. You can use any trimmer you want with this. Um, I think sometimes a guillotine is even easier. Now we are going to trim from our three inch divot to our first score mark, or to our score mark there. So you're gonna lay this on your cutting, whatever you're using for cutting, and you wanna put the score right at one part where the line will be cut, and then the divot at the other. This will make sense once I cut. You're gonna lay this down and cut. Okay, so there's one away, and now let's do the other one. I'm going to lay one piece on the score, turn it and place the other one on the score. So I've got a fold in, this, in the cut mark here, and my little divot in the cut mark, and slice. That gives me my slants. Now that you have these slants, you can just Fold your score marks down. I had white paper stuck in my trimmer, obviously, and it's on here. Now, I'm not going to worry about scoring these just yet. I, I mean, um, I'm not worried about pressing these in place too bad just yet. I'm just going to get them folded to start with. Now, this one will make the look of a double-breasted or one that wraps over. If you don't want it to wrap this far, just trim some of that off. That's all you have to do. But that's I like it to wrap over like that. Okay. okay. This is the Tim Holtz Alterations. Um, I do not know the name of it, but it looks kind of like um, crocodile 
Maybe snake. It's not snake skin. It's crocodile. It might be snake skin. Somebody tell me. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, but here's what I like about this. Do you see how the Tim Holtz ones are wider on this side and kind of inset on the other side? You don't have to have this to make this work, but I like the way this really uh, makes this super easy. So what I do is I slide this in to the card that I just created with my folds, and I want to make sure that I have the pattern all the way to the bottom just by checking, okay? Then I'm going to fold one side over, and I'm just going to fold the other side right over on it. This is why I wasn't too worried about that, you know, pressing down of those edges. And I'm going to do, I'm going to run this through my cuddle bug just like that. Okay, so I have the cuddle bug. I have an A plate, and then I have a B plate on top. And now I'm going to place my card and the folder down, and my next B plate on top. Just like so. And run it through. Now I'm just going to get that out and move this guy out of the way. Okay, now you can see that I can slip this out. And the cool thing is I end up with embossed fronts and a smooth back, which I really like. And look how well it embossed both pieces. See that? It's really good. Okay, so now I'm going to score these, press these edges down a little better. And I'm just going to do that with a bone folder and just kind of catch the edge because I don't want to get into my embossing. Just want to catch that edge like that. Then come back and catch this edge. And I'm being a little careful because, I, like I said, I don't want to mash down the embossing. So now I have a good, tight card base. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide which side I want to overlap. And I can do either way, this way or this way. And I think I like it this way. Okay, a couple things you want to do. On my original card, I did not seal the base down, but at the card party, all the girls suggested that it would have been better if I had done that, so we're going to do that. Just going to run a strip of ATG down, just like so, and then I'm going to close this one in, and then I'm going to run a little strip along here and here, but nowhere else because we need to keep the pocket, okay? So then we just close that down. Now, you can see how you see, see how that looks? Okay, now we need to put buttons on. For my buttons, I'm using my Martha Stewart button punch and emboss, which I love and I got at Michael's some time ago. And I'm just gonna punch out a couple of these guys. Now, if you had real buttons, you could use those. That would be just as cute. I don't know, I just really like this punch. I've gotten a lot of use out of it. If you're looking for something fun, that was that's an awesome one. Now on my original card, I just used my white pen and did some, some drawing in there. But I thought for you guys, I would take another suggestion from the card party. That's another cool thing about the card party. When we get together, we all talk about things. And I'm going to thread this twine through here and make it look like they are stitched down. Really simply with some red baker's twine. The red's going to match my bow tie. Then I'm put... now I just ran some more ATG on the back of both of them. Just like so. And now I'm just going to place them down where I want them. Aren't those cute? And you could do more if you wanted. You could do three. Abby that night did three. So, Okay, the next thing, let's work on our insert piece. Now, what I did for my insert is I left this part square, but I corner rounded the top. So, I'm going to take my corner rounder, or one of my corner rounders, and just round that off. I just thought it kind of looked like a shoulder. thought that was kind of cute. Now, if you're having trouble sliding the card in because it's too tight, just trim a tiny little bit off one side and corner round it. It'll be fine. Now, you're going to slide this in here, and it's not going to go all the way to the bottom because you sealed that bottom, and that's okay. It's cute like that. You may need to adjust based on your envelopes, though. Now, the bow tie, and this is one that I made for the other night, and I'll show you where I got it from. Got some dimensions on the back. Dimensionals. I'll stick this guy down. And I am going to make sure that he clears the top, he comes in, so that way if I do have an envelope issue, it'll, you know, it'll still work. Now, where did I get the bow tie from? <laughs> Believe it or not, it's from my bunny rabbit template that's on Etsy, that I have on my Etsy store, and it's right here. I cut it out. 
and I took it upstairs to cut these out so I don't have it with me, but it's this shape and it comes in that template and you just trace it out onto here. Then you can get fancy if you want to use a white pen and decorate this, whatever you want to do, but that's the first manly card. Now let's work on the second. Now for my second card, I kind of backed out so you could see a little more. The second card is super, super easy and here's how it goes. Eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. I'm gonna cut it down the middle at four and a quarter, okay? So basically, we're making a portrait card and you're gonna get two out of one. I'm only gonna make one for now, so put that aside. You need your scoreboard again. You're gonna use it for a couple of things. Number one, we are going to score the center, which on here, because of the way we just cut it, will be five and a half, because we're gonna make an A2 size card. So we're gonna score it at five and a half here, okay? And now let's fold it. Once you have your card folded, you want to take the folded edge and put it into the top of your scoreboard. Now you're going to take your bone folder and you're going to come in one inch. So we're at four and a quarter, so we're going to come into three and a quarter and put a mark just at the edge, okay? Martha Stewart's board is perfect for that because your little board, your bone goes into those little holes a little bit. And you want to come in and do one inch on the other side as well. Just a little mark. Okay, so when you open it up, and I'll bring this up, I hope you can see that. There is a mark here and a mark here, just for reference. Now, let's place it back down on our board, your board and make sure that your line is in that five and a half mark where you started, and now you will need an X-Acto knife or a blade, or if you're really good, you can do this with your cutting board, but I just found this to be super easy. I'm going to take that X-Acto and stick it into my first mark on my score line. And it goes into that little channel and it kind of holds your blade for you. And I'm going to pull it to me until I reach the other one. Now, go slow because you don't want to cut all the way through. About like that. Now you have a slice here, okay? Now for the super easy part. You decide how deep you want your collar to be by placing your scissors in. I eyeballed the center. If you don't feel comfortable eyeballing, you can measure. And then you slice a little slice right through the center there. Turn it over and fold these guys down. You want to fold them all the way to your one edge and, fold, and to the center. You don't have to score or anything, just press. Isn't that easy? Come on, so easy. Then the bow tie, or then the tie of your choice. Now this tie I cut from the Artiste cartridge. And I will show you, it is right here. This is your Artiste cartridge from Close to My Heart. And I cut it right here, this little guy. Um, cut it based on the size of your card. I played around a little bit. I did one at five inches, one at six inches. I finally ended up with the six inch one, I'm pretty sure. I can't remember exactly, but I think it was the six inch. But just play around a little bit. Then, you can put this on dimension if you want to, but I didn't really see a need to. So, we will center this guy right in our collar and then this guy right underneath just kind of make sure you got it straight now what I think really made the other card was the stitching see the difference in all the stitching now let's round the corners now this one is rounded all the way around but I have another idea you know how on the other one we only rounded the top I think that'd be super cute here too to still mimic that shoulder. But this is your card, so play with it and do whatever you want to. Isn't that super cute? And now when they open the card, it does this, and so from the inside they see that. How easy, guys. Super easy. And like I said, if you do the stitching, it's cute. Now, I had not done the pocket before I went to the card party, but somebody said, ooh, you need to do a stitched pocket. And I think you should probably maybe measure this or kind of pencil it in so you can get good straight stitch lines. Modern. That is that card. And then this, here's this one. So there's one version of that one. Here is this version of this one. And here it is with the stitching and like on the bow tie and stuff like that. So there's a couple of different ways to do it. I wanted to show you some different looks. Obviously, I'm into brown tonight. I don't get it. Uh, <laughs> but imagine if you did this in some bright fun colors for the kids or maybe your dad has a certain tie that he wears or maybe there's one you got him as a kid that you might could even mimic in some designer paper. That'd be super cute, wouldn't it? 
Well, guys, that's this, and I'll work on some other of those tutorials. Now, listen, I'm going to link below in this description Sheila's video for the alligator card. So many people have loved it, and she has posted the video, so I'm going to link that below in the description. So please go check that out and tell her that I sent you. Um, she will love to have you, and I think you'll love all of her cards she does. They are amazing. So there you go, guys. A jump start on Father's Day. How about that? Or, or Brother's Day, or, you know somebody's birthday or something. <laughs> so there you go. I will see you guys on Friday. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.